Today on another shocking episode of Real Ghost Stories Online, when a family member notices a substance abuse problem with her brother-in-law and tries to help, she discovers that she is in for something much deeper than an intervention. She discovers that there may be something incalculably evil that is attached to him, something driving him to ruin his life beyond his own control. That story and much more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. Welcome to the program. And if you uh, would like access to our once a week bonus episode jam packed with some of the uh, creepiest stories that we get, uh, as well as the whole archive, 400 some episodes there, and then the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of other episodes, quite literally the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. Get all that when you support the program. It's only $5 a month. Do that uh, patreon.com slash real ghost stories or search real ghost stories online on the Patreon app. Four words, real ghost stories online. Uh, or just go to ghostpodcast.com. Another way to sign up uh, and uh, get in on all of that. It's uh, Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? When you say thousands upon thousands upon thousands, how many do you think you have? I don't even know. <laughs> Lots. Uh, I, I'm i going to guess probably in the three to 4,000 range somewhere. That would be my guess just based on the amount of days <laughs> in a week and how many shows I've done over the last, you know, eight to nine years. So, um, you know, some sh- days have more than one show. And, um, so yeah, I think we're somewhere in that area. When you started way back when did you do it? How many times a week when you first started? Cause I wasn't on when you first started. Yeah. Um, it was, um, like, was it one or two? I think it was like one initially, and then it went to two pretty quick. And then it just, I just kind of kept upping it. It was at one point, it was seven days a week of new episodes. Um, well, and, and that was so cool because, like, I have a few podcasts that I really enjoy, but they only post like one episode a week, yeah. maybe two. Yeah. And then a lot of them do just a season, and then you got to wait for yeah. the next round. Mm hmm. And so I like that, that, you know, if you find a podcast you like, the daily sure. feed. But what what I, I, I exactly, I mean, that, that's, I like having, I put out like the extras and all the shows too, where it's an extra ghost story. Um, and it's just like a, a call from the archive because I save all those. And so we play those back. I mean, it could be a call from seven, eight years ago. Um, but I mean, a ghost story is a ghost story. So I like to put those sort of things out there as well. But we do, I mean, there's four episodes a week of Real Ghost Stories Online, five if you count the EPP episode. Um, and then on the weekend, we just run the you know best of and some previews for the uh, the Grave Talks. I think it's really cool. Good job, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it really is. I don't think people understand just how much no. work it is. Well, but. And what's interesting with the podcast, uh, it, it if you can kind of be a jack of all trades, it's not hard. But I think there's a lot of people that go into this and they go, they don't know how to edit. They know they can talk, but they don't know how to edit. So then they have to have an editor do it. And then that has to be produced. And then you have, well, you need artwork. Well, if if you can do all those things yourself, it's great. It's so easy. But I think there's a lot of shows where it's like they have like a staff to do each one of those things. Um, like a lot of the bigger shows do. But it, it still surprises me then how, um, you know, how they're able not to, to put out more content with with that sort of um, infrastructure. I was listening to the local public radio station. They do, they do this little segment. It's 10 minutes a week. Yeah. And um, at the end of it, I assume what they mean when they say pro- producers are um i think that's all of the people who produce like any episode on a regular basis so maybe they do one a month i don't know because it's only one day a week for 10 minutes yeah but they rattle off like eight names and i'm like what the hell (laughs) do all those people do that's what i laugh about sometimes when i hear podcasts that especially like are not anything 
special. It's just like, you're like, why was there that? Why? Why was there that many people involved? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, hats off to you. Thank you. Um, Let's go to our first story. And of course, our phone number 855-853-4802. To share your real ghost story with us. It says, this is Mandy from Fayetteville, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I've called in before talking about seeing my grandpa after he passed away just a month before my son was born and different paranormal or strange experiences that I've witnessed. Your reading voice is amazing and I want you to read this story. My brother and I act like brother and sister. And my brother-in-law and I act like brother and sister. We argue, fight, then laugh with each other. He's a very self-centered person, loves to drink and loves the attention. I am quiet, go to bed early, and would rather stay sober than to put myself through the troubles he does. He's a very troubled person. Over the past year or so, he's managed to drink just about every day. The weekends are worse, and I believe he has a demon or spirit attached to him. He lived with a woman who had a five-year-old son in a small home, and strange things began happening. Lights turning on and off, weird sounds, random voices, doors opening, even the garage door. The five-year-old son would often say, there's something in this house, which would freak all of us out. My bill moved back home after they split up and he spiraled. I believe that this demon spirit preys on his weaknesses. He had a failed suicide attempt in January of 22. In another episode in mid-February and his family had finally enough of his stuff. He reached out to my husband, his older brother for help. We're a very close family and he knew he had disappointed his family and knew that my husband and I attended a church and work at a school. I invited a pastor who's close to our age to come speak to him. He poured his heart out saying that he often hears voices in his head saying, if you don't pick up that piece of trash, your mom will die. Or if you don't do this, something bad will happen. He went on to say that he has vivid dreams of his dad, my father-in-law dying and wakes up multiple times during the night to the feeling of choking. He's also been thrown against the wall in his bedroom. Our pastor friend really just listened and prayed for him. It was here that he mentioned that name Legion, as in the demon Legion, was constantly in his mind. My pastor friend seemed concerned and yet again prayed. The next day, my mother-in-law reached out to us by saying that he came home from our dinner and went straight to bed, but was up within 30 minutes and became very pale. He explained that someone just pulled his ankles and pulled him off the bed. We're continuing to pray for him, that the demons would leave him be. But as Christians, our family understands that this is a very serious matter. As a side note, I've experienced an increase in activity around flickering lights and my premonitions, though I don't believe this to be a correlation with him. I have this thing where I'll talk about someone and they'll message me. Within a day or so, I'll see them. I saw some overgrown trees in our neighborhood and I thought, I wonder who's responsible for cutting those limbs since they're over the fence. And the next day, tree cutters are out there. I thought so long to see my grandpa around Christmas. He appeared in the doorway of the room that my grandma now lives in. As far as the lights go, everything from our small bathroom light to the light in the doctor's office, street lights and my current boss's office lights always go crazy when I walk in. At my old office, we used to switch desks. I had to change batteries in my keyboards three times in less than eight months. Have you heard of someone draining energy like this or being able to unintentionally manifest and think about future situations that come true but get different from deja vu? Love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for giving people a space to tell their ghostly encounters. Thoughts on that? I think there's two different things going on. Obviously, there's her stuff and then his stuff. And, you know, it's just hard to tell with him because, um, you know, because mental illness can also do some really strange things. Yeah. And, you know, people can be convinced there's someone talking to him. They can be convinced all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, I had to run. I had to climb that tree with my gun to shoot those people who were in my yard. Yeah. And there's nobody in there, but they see him. It's that real. Yeah. And so that's so hard to tell, you know, because he could be seeing a demon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it could be mental illness. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people with mental illness will go to drugs and alcohol to kind of try to calm that down. But really, I think it does the opposite in a lot of cases. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's not an answer to any of that. That, Yeah. I mean, it, it just ends up making those sort of things worse. But the other stuff. 
with her, I think sounds more like she's got some of her own stuff going on, mm -hmm. you know, because I, and I thought about this. I hadn't thought about it in years till you were reading that story, but my sister brought it up one day, like a month or two ago. I totally forgotten about this, but like when I was a kid, I couldn't wear a watch Okay, because they would all stop. And I got lots of different watches. Yeah. Because I wanted to have a watch because I was a kid and they had these really cool big watches out, super colorful and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah. And I wanted to wear a watch so bad. And um, I, it would stop. I couldn't keep any watch going. Now, those were all the kind that you would wind up. Sure. You know, not like now. But, um, you know, so I think that some people do have a weird kind of energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I haven't tried to wear a watch in a really long time. Really? So, like, you've just never worn a watch? No. It just didn't work. And yeah. I think that went on from, I think I got my first one, like, when I was seven or eight, probably mm -hmm. eight. And I tried it all throughout, you know, as I kid, when I was a kid. I think by the time I turned 18, I don't know that I ever got another one. Just because they would always stop. Yeah. It's kind of a waste of money. That's but, interesting. But, you know, the lights turning on and batteries draining, like, maybe there's something to that, that some people have a weird thing about them. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, I don't know that that's... Like, I do think that weird things like that will pop in your head. I think it happens to a lot of us. We just don't remember that we thought. I wonder who's responsible for trimming those trees. And then boom, yeah. they're trimmed. Is it a coincidence? Could be. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, I think things like that happen to more people than what they think. They just don't ever associate it. Then you just go, oh, yeah, I was just thinking about that the other day. You don't think it's weird. I, I have a lot of that where I'm like, oh, yeah, I was just thinking about the other day where that happens to me all the time. And I, I, I recognize that it's kind of weird, but I have that all the time. Yeah, so that's kind of like your superpower. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, that's an interesting thing. So there's a lot of people I've talked to where it's like later in life, they're like, I just kind of started to kind of calm my mind down and understand, wow, I actually do have some abilities that I never thought I did um, in terms of being sensitive and, and uh, being able to do those sort of things. And it could have been things that you had at a younger age. You just never connected it. You never... Yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah, I thought of that the other day. It was just no yeah, big deal. Exactly. Yeah. But it's interesting. So, yeah, I think there's something with her. Mm -hmm. And what's going on with him? Not yeah. totally sure. Yeah. I mean, I would wonder with the guy if there is something going on. And the only reason I wonder if there is something beyond, um, you know, what would be mentally going on there is the fact that there was some weird activity going on around him as well. Um, but I, I think if he can get the other stuff under control um, and in some sort of positive light, get him on a better track, you know, I think a lot of those other things will kind of go away. But he, he, he's got to get to a, a, the help that he needs to do that. And I just wasn't sure if those were really things that happened or if those were things he said that happened. Yeah, that'd be a good question to, to ask, too, because yeah. someone in that sort of state. So I wasn't sure on that. Would could easily think those things are happening. Uh, oh, when somebody's having a manic episode, like they believe it a hundred percent. Oh yeah. Yeah. So super you know, fun. I could tell you they got pulled off of a bed by their feet and you would believe it. Yeah. It's they're in a completely different world. Mm -hmm. No, it's super fun. Uh, let's go to another letter. <laughs> so I was thinking too, how fun. It's just, it was, it was just a great experience <laughs> that I absolutely loved sharing with, uh, someone uh my, and it wasn't me <laughs> uh my story happened a few years ago uh after i was uh, out on my own and i had uh, to move in my apartment with my sister i was working labor jobs and still paying off student loans so she did uh she said i could stay on the couch the only bills i had to pay was my car and help with the dish network and food at the time i was always helping to clean too one of the maintenance workers was sitting in his car and there was many cigarette filters and ashes all over the side driver's door of the car. I knew him well and that there was something wrong. His eyes were distant looking and he looked pale and I called him his name and didn't respond until I tapped on his glass window. He wasn't making sense and most of his speech was mixed Spanish and English and he was breathing really short 
I think means hyperventilating. I took him to the apartment to calm him down with some tea and food, but he was shaking all over. His body wasn't calming down, but his speech was getting better. He told me the apartment he worked on was haunted, and he ran out of there after seeing a bathtub full of blood or something in it. The other workers didn't see anything and asked me if I would go with him. I told him I wasn't going in there because I didn't want to risk seeing the same thing. He told me that one of the neighbors died in there, but the management didn't want to tell anyone about it and to keep it quiet. They said a girl overdosed on her medication and died in the same bathtub where we saw all the blood. He found a suicide note in her bedroom and it confirmed it wasn't an accident. That girl died over a year before the day that he saw that happen. He was begging me to go prove he wasn't going insane and finally I said I would go if we went with another person. If three people saw anything crazy, they wouldn't say we were making things up. I knew the neighbor because he would skateboard around the neighborhood and he was a college student. I can't lie, we drank some beers to get the courage to go in that apartment with him. The worker didn't drink, but he waited until he had a good buzz before going with him. We didn't see anything. I knew he was still thinking that people didn't believe him, but I told him it may have gone away. He didn't go back in there until the next week. I didn't see the worker again and asked the other workers what happened to him. They said he was working in the department, but ran out with a bloody nose and never came back to work. They said he only showed up back to the office to collect his tools that he left there. I believe he was telling the truth because nobody in his situation would quit that job. I think his nose is bleeding because of blood pressure because I've seen some people do that when they get really nervous. I never got to speak with him again, but I know that his only bad habit was smoking cigarettes and it's not something that would alter how someone would think or maybe see things. The other workers confirmed to me the same story of the girl from the apartment who committed suicide. I moved from there years ago, but my sister still stayed in the neighborhood a few more years. She worked often, so I can't find any ways to verify if those problems ever happened again. To me, it was very real, because when someone has reached those limits to the end of their existence, they could linger in this world. Thank you for reading, and please read more stories each episode, because I like hearing them. I like the calls, too, but I really enjoy hearing you read. Thank you. All right. What do you think of that one? Well, number one, um, I like that. That was very nice how both um, today commented on your reading of stories. <laughs> I know. It's kind of Which funny. Which is very nice. It's almost, I'm not two, adding it in there. I'm not like, and by the way, you have the voice of a god. <laughs> oh, thank you. I read that line myself. Thank you. Um, no, like, I think that was a very nice thing for them to say. And then that last um, person refer back to the beginning of this episode and the 3000 plus episodes that you have out there. Cause mm -hmm. chances are you haven't heard them all. And if you have, you could go back to the first one and you've forgotten what it is. Yeah. I, like me. <laughs> but I, I know. Cause I'll have people message me sometimes and they're like, Hey, on the episode, blah, blah, blah. Oh blah, yeah. And I'm like, dude, I don't remember being on that one. I know. I had but, somebody the other day and I feel bad. They're like, I knew this, my story was on something. But it was had this there and that. I'm like, I'm sorry. I have no idea. I have no idea at all. Well, and then it's like, or I remember that story. I cannot tell you which one it was on. Yeah. No, I just can't. No, it, they're yeah. out there. You just got to listen to them. Anyways, so start listening. Yeah. Um, But, you know, that's interesting because, you know, I really thought the story was going to go one way and it didn't because I really thought... Nobody believed the guy. And then the guy's like, come back in with me. And I thought that's a really stupid thing to do because mm -hmm. that just seemed like, you know, something right out of a movie where they go in with him and then somebody's dead. But it wasn't like that. Like they went in and saw nothing. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. I was ready for like, and then we went, went in bom, 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 and we're and one of the people died in the bathtub. But it was kind of interesting that so it could be back to what we were talking about in the last episode mm -hmm. that maybe he knew about the person dying in there and he was very you know freaked out by it maybe mm -hmm. he saw something that he didn't really see yeah and maybe that's true like blood pressure nosebleed mm -hmm. um or maybe he saw it i don't yeah. know I mean, it'd be interesting that you'd be leaving over a nosebleed. Yeah. You know. Now, I can't imagine that 
if I would have seen that, that I even would have said, you've got to come back in with me. I mm-hmm. don't, I think that's when I would have quit. I yeah. don't think I would have gone back because jobs like that you can get. Those are the jobs people don't like. Sure. So I'd have been like, there's another apartment building needing someone just like me. I'm going to go there. Where yeah. nobody committed suicide. I guess it was a drug overdose. Where nobody died in the yeah. bathtub. Um. And I also get why, like, the apartment complex isn't going to say anything to anybody moving in. And they don't have to either. Hmm. Uh, the only, only when you're buying property, a apartment complex does not need to disclose that. So you that. could be at the site of a mass murder, mm-hmm. but you're just renting it. Yep. Wow. If you're a rental, they don't have to disclose it. That's crazy. I mean, at least, you know, you could look up any recent murder, you know, but sometimes if you get really into the past pre-internet days, uh, and if the house is that old, then, you know, you should probably do a little deeper dive. But uh, there's that website. This is not an advertisement for them, but it's a died in house. And you can uh, put in the address and it scans like everything. And then it tells you if anybody died in the house. And you and I talked about that before, but it was after I bought this house. And I'm like, "Mm, no. (laughs) Should I do it for you? Should we do it like on the air live? Nope. It'd be like a Maury Povich, like, are you the father type thing? Right. Except is your, did somebody die in your house, Carol? And I have the envelope in my hand. Oh my God. That would be like a good game show where you get um, like somebody, Oh, you can get this amazing house and it's, it's free. And um, they don't know the history of it. They just think they're doing a, a remodel and they put their heart and soul into it. And they have all these people come and help them. And then they're just so proud and they're showing it off. And they're like, okay, Here's the deal. Uh, you can like keep the house and live in it, or you can have the house and one million dollars if you want to know the true history. <laughs> oh well, then you take the the one million dollars. But I maybe it would be like you buy the house, they've fallen in love with it. Yeah, you can walk away now. Okay. With your investment, you'll get your investment money back. Just mm-hmm. walk away. Yep. Or you're stuck living in the house forever. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I love the house so much. I yeah. really want to know. Yep. And if I, if we move with this, with it's so difficult to find the right house. Mm-hmm. No, it is perfect for us. And they, the, the, the houses, TV. the houses have to be like really bad, like serial killer or like multiple homicides. You know, some satanic shit. And then you get like the good bones ladies from where is it, Milwaukee or someplace yeah. like that. Because they buy those really crap tastic houses. Yeah. Yeah. Or bargain block the guys from Detroit. Uh-huh. Like those are horrible houses. Then you fix them up and they're so adorable. Yeah. You got sweat equity in it. You're so attached to the house and bomb, bomb, bomb. There was a mass murder in this house. Yep. And then do it, you still. You already decided to keep it. Yep. <laughs> Here's what's coming up next week. <laughs> <laughs> it actually sounds like kind of a good Jeffrey Dahmer. Like somebody's gonna do it. <laughs> you thought the apartment complex was torn down. You didn't know about his other hideaway. <laughs> I think it's it'd be a good uh, creepy, but I could see somebody doing it. I think it could work. I think there's a, there's a concept right there. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Hi. Hey, um, so I'm brand new to the show. I was referred by uh, Monsters Among Us. It was a commercial. I got curious. So I'm checking it out. It's interesting. You guys are kind of funny. But anyway, the only one I got is, oh, by the way, Javier, San Diego, California. Sorry, a little a little late over here so it just came to mind i'm going to give it to you and you starting up what happened was i was staying with a roommate female it was just me and her she had a bunch of cats and um so i would stay there alone i'd come from work you know shower eat you know she would wander off to her parents upstairs it was weird it was the garage kind of an apartment. So what happened was, he always said it's haunted, blah, blah, blah. 
It's on Indian burial grounds, you know, and I always laugh, like, oh, come on, stop it. But one day, we were taking it, watching a movie, laughing, having a cool time. And it was nighttime. The mom would always come in and check on us. We were 20 years. She was just a friend. So all of a sudden, we're, we're, you know, in the room laughing, blah, 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 watching a movie, you know. And all of a sudden, we hear the door open, swing open, like someone's mad, the front door. And you have to open it. Like, you literally have to push, push it, which the mom would always do. And come in, hey, guys, blah, 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 dinner's ready, you know, et cetera. And all of a sudden, it opened. We heard it. So we're waiting for the mom to come in. The mom never showed up. The cat, all cringed up, like hissing, like all, you could see their hair standing up, looking straight at the door. And I just felt this chill. And I looked at her and she laughed. She goes, oh, it's the little girl. I'm like, stop, don't. I, I, I stay here by myself, that's not fair. Don't manifest it, don't play with it. And she just laughed and she's like, hey, I don't know. And so I went out there, investigated some new cats, all cringed up, facing the door. Obviously, it swung open and slammed. Like, boom, like you could hear. Probably across the street, like someone was mad. We thought the mom had a bad day or something, right? And nothing, nobody, you know. But I didn't see it, that's what it said. I didn't see the door open. I only seen, I mean, I only heard it, and I seen the cat looking at the door, you know, facing, and, you know, how cats get when they're defensive and scared, and, you know, if you're a cat person, I am. That's what happened. And that was it. We, we heard the door swing open. Like, it wasn't the wind. It wasn't nobody. It was some paranormal. That's it. That's the only one I got. I was like in my 20s. You know, I, I, I hated the place. It was cheap though. I moved out like maybe in a couple of months. You know, I said goodbye to her. She was into all this weird stuff. You know, she, I don't know if she was a Satanist. I don't know what she believed, weird stuff. But um, I don't know, it was a trip. That's it. That, I mean, my whole life, I'm 40 years old. That's it. That's the only story I got, like, I listen to all these shows. I'll check out yours. And Monsters Among Us, it, it, like, into the fray, coast to coast, George Norton, Ancient Aliens. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? Paranormal caught on, you know, you know. So no offense if it doesn't happen, but if I don't come, become a huge fan. But I'll check you out. See what's up. <laughs> Anyway, that's my story. Uh, good luck on your show. Um, if you know Derek Hayes, tell him okay, he just kind of keeps going and going. You know? I'm sorry, that really made me laugh. The, you know, basically like, okay, I've checked out your show. Please don't be offended if I end up not liking it. <laughs> like, like so. It's one of those random things that people say. Yeah. That really, like, we're never going to meet him. Yeah. And it's not like we're going to run into him at the store and then he awkwardly has to say, Carol, I really like the podcast. You, you guys are great. You know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you don't have to say anything. Exactly. Like, it's going to be funny. I do expect a follow up like, hey, I gave it a few more episodes. I, you guys suck really bad. And um, I gave it everything I had. He seemed like a very stream of consciousness speaker where it's just kind of <laughs> anything that comes to mind just comes out. It and, seemed a little like high. Yeah, a little like, bit. Yeah. A little bit, you know, but it was just funny. Yeah. It's like that made me laugh. <laughs> the honesty. Like, and and if he doesn't like it, I won't be offended. That's I won't, perfectly yeah. fine. I won't either. I won't be offended. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but it's funny because before we started, Tony and I always spend like 30, 45 minutes just talking. And we just talked about that. The other day I came in at night, it was like 10.30 to 11. 
I came in through the garage and my front door was wide open. Mm -hmm. But the first thing I did was look at my pets. Now my dog, he's really hard of hearing. He might not have known anything, but I knew my cats would be reacting if someone was in the house. Sure. So that cat reacted. Mm -hmm. And I always think that's interesting because if you do have something that you think's weird, unexplainable, maybe paranormal, and your pets are acting like nothing, yeah. then I would be like, maybe it wasn't paranormal. Yeah. But if the pets, you know, if the dogs are growling and the cats are hissing or something, mm-hmm. I'd be a little more concerned. Yeah, the petometers, they usually kind of, uh, they uh, they know what's going on. But that said, I still had to walk through my house and open every freaking closet door <laughs> And the scariest one was looking behind the shower curtain. I don't know why that one freaked me out so bad. You should have liked because I was like, okay, I don't think there's anyone in here because my pets seem normal, mm-hmm. but there could be someone in here because my door's freaking wide open. What you should have done is like went to like YouTube and looked up like movie trailer music, and and just started playing it on your phone as you walk through the house. So every time like something dramatic kind of came up, you had like the orchestrated sounds and. Everything going well, on. To be quite honest, that was basically the soundtrack in my own head. Exactly. But if you had that play, like, that would confuse like, the I would shit. Just, like I'd want to close my eyes, but I'd have to open the closet door and yeah. peek in and like, oh, okay, there's somebody there. Can you imagine if you and were the like, criminal? Something could yeah. be fitting underneath that spare bed. Yep. So then I had to look, and it was just all that was like a little terrifying. Oh uh, yeah. Part. Did you knock? We're like Dennis. Dennis. Are you back? And then the Halloween music starts. And Dennis escaped from prison. And that's the theme. Because I did I did get robbed once when I was moving. Yeah. And I was like, I remember walking in because I wasn't staying there. And I walked in and so they just, but I'd already moved everything I wanted. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, I'm leaving. If you're still in here, take any of this. I'm going to go ahead and go. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. Just take whatever you want. <laughs> I yelled that. And then I left because I was like, fuck that. I'm not staying here. Yeah. I've got nothing yeah. here. I'll come back and get this shit tomorrow. But I'm like, just take whatever you want. It's good. It's good. <laughs> you can have it. I was just thinking the. Um, Thank you for taking that nasty ass microwave. Appreciate it. You know how a lot of uh, real true stories start out, uh, you know, as a movie. And then they're like, well, this is really successful, but the real story kind of ends. So they have to make fictionalized extensions of it. They should do one that starts out with the true BTK story. And then the fictionalized one starts after that, where he he escapes from prison and he's back. And it's the same sort of it's very Halloween-esque. And we, we see him. He'd be a very creepy figure walking, you know, in the dark, you know, by some fence light. And there's, you know, just a little bit and there. He's got his rope and he's just walking towards people. That'd be a very villainous character. And you could have that. And like, yeah. So thanks for saying all this, because when we started this podcast, like it was light out. And mm-hmm. now I have windows open on either side of me. You know how I feel about that. <laughs> so there can be some creepy ass guy right now with ropes in his hands looking at me. Breaking news. Dennis Rader has escaped from El Dorado <laughs> prison. <laughs> Just like the uh, beginning of Night of the Living Dead, where it's uh, (laughs) like, how could this be happening? Tony's narrating it. He's not even here and it's happening. Oh, my God. That's 2022. Anything's possible. You know, (laughs) (laughs) remember back to 2020 when we thought that was as bad as it could get. (laughs) That's so adorable. How naive we were. That was cute. (laughs) It was really. Like, oh my God, we're going to have to wear masks. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a fucking mask again and take the rest of this stuff. Did you see uh, back my rights as a woman? I'd be fine with that. I, 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 every day I'm reading the news, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> did you see the uh, New York City, um, and what was it? It's the Public Safety Commission or something. Uh, they put out a PSA today about what to do in the, in the event of a nuclear blast. <laughs> and it's like and it's just so, go outside if there's a nuclear blast just go outside and just be like okay it's my time <laughs> well i believe you're supposed to go indoors that's that's how the uh uh the kitchen yeah, that radiation does not go through doors or 
windows. I mean, maybe a window could stop it, but like, look around your house. There's any number of places it could come in. Here's the uh, PSA. And it starts out with this kind of like CGI New York. And then this woman kind of walks out in a weird perspective to everything else. Is this else. for real or did you just make it this up? This is fucking real. Take a listen. Don't ask me how or why. Just know that the big one has hit. Okay? So what do we do? There are three important steps that I want you to remember. Step one, get inside fast. You, your friends, your family, get inside. And no, staying in the car is not an option. You need to get into a building and move away from the windows. I like how just kind of jokingly she's talking. And <laughs> no, staying yeah, in a car, car is not an option. Step two, stay inside. Shut all doors and windows. Have a basement? Head there. If you don't have one, get as far into the middle of the building as possible. If you were outside after the blast, get clean immediately. Remove and bag all outer clothing to keep radioactive dust or ash away from your body. This is so bizarre. Step three, stay tuned. Follow media for more information. Don't forget to sign up for Notify NYC for media official <laughs> alerts and updates. There ain't going to be no media. <laughs> That fucking happens. And don't go outside until officials say it's safe. Oh, yes. Which could be like, what, 10 years? (laughs) New York City Emergency Management, ladies and gentlemen. Number one should be prepare for the nuclear blast. Have lots of water on hand. Get lots of canned goods. Make sure you have a can opener that's not electric. Make make sure, you know, it's like, do you have pets? Make sure you have plenty of pet food. Yeah. Where do you store your pet food? Is it in the garage? Well, chances are it won't be safe from the radiation that's going to be sneaking in. You know, it's like, it's just not that easy. Like you open the door to get in the house, the radiation gets in. Yeah. It's not like it just, you brought it in with you. Oh, I'll just bag up those clothes. I can't put them outside, Well, but they'll be fine in this plastic bag. We've been warned. (laughs) So it's just like that, that just reminded me of just duck and cover. Like it's 100. Th- yes. It was just that simple. If you see this mushroom cloud, just get under your desk. Well, because they can't like express the reality to people. Everyone will freak the fuck out. And it's like, you'll probably be instantly vaporized. If you're outside, you're not going to make it to the door. And if you did happen to make it to the door, you'll die a very painful death of cancer in the next 48 hours. Um, you know, it would just be, you know, horrific. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because if if the bomb happens in New York and you're in Kansas, mm-hmm. okay, maybe I don't know how big the bomb is. Yeah. You know, there's so many factors in all of this. What that lady is talking about, yeah. Like, but if like Hiroshima, like that bomb obliterated, like those people are gone. Yeah. Like they just immediately turned to dust or something. They were, they did. I mean, you there's... don't get to just go in the house and bag up your clothes and hope for the best. I mean, if you're outside of the blast zone far enough, yeah, you could. But if you're in like that immediate, if something like that, there would be nothing left on Manhattan. They'd be gone. It would just be flames. And then there'd be this whole radius that would yes. cause severe radiation burns. Yeah, like the greater New York, the tri-state area basically is radiation central. So, yeah. So anyway, that I don't know how we got onto this dark, dark topic of the day. But. I don't know. That was dark. It wasn't paranormal, but it's every bit as creepy. Yeah, it is. I, I saw that today. I'm like, oh, this is great. Are we just trying to really freak everyone out? Like, is this? I think that's kind of the goal. I, I really do. Uh, because it's just like one thing after another. And it's like this, this little piece of information is not going to help anyone. Uh, so why are we doing it? (laughs) I don't know. I I just, I feel like there's a lot of let's freak out the American public. God, no shit. So I don't know. All right. That's going to wrap up today's episode of real ghost stories online. If you like the show, keep us on the air, become an extra podcast person and EPP at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories greatly appreciate that and uh, hope you can uh, sign up until next time for carol and all of us at real ghost stories online i'm tony bruski thanks for listening 